Will Kybella work for me? Well, in this video, I, Dr. Sark Patel, a double board certified facial plastic surgeon, and I'm going to explain to you guys why Kybella works for some people and not others. Well, before we begin, let's talk about what the heck is Kybella. Kybella, also known as deoxycholic acid, was an FDA approved medication back in 2014 that has been used to dissolve stubborn fat in the under chin area. Now, when it was approved, it was done through FDA studies in which the average patient was injected with six rounds of treatments with about two vials each time in order to prove that it does work. Now, these patients had moderate submental liposis and not everyone who it's injected it in real life has the same protocols or parameters. So what we're trying to figure out here is why does this medication have a 60% satisfaction rate overall when in reality, any treatment in the cosmetic field should be way higher. A lot of it is patient selection, and this video is made not just for patients, but to educate other injectors out there and providers using the medication so that we can all have happier patients. There's two different ways that we need to think about before we jump into the easy world of Kybella. Now, the first one is gonna be volume. In the studies, as I mentioned, the average patient had six treatments and two vials each time. Of course, it was free for the patient, but as a patient who is now looking at it when it's not free, you need to evaluate efficacy. So what I mean by that is, are you going to actually save money doing a treatment three or four times, or is this going to be not worthwhile? If you have a severe amount of under chin fat, do not do Kybella. You're going to need enough that there's no amount that's going to be worth it. There's very little variation in cost of liposuction when you have a lot of fat versus little, but with Kybella, you're paying for per unit volume, so you don't want to go overboard. I tell people, um, if you're going to get about four to five vials of Kybella, anything more than that, don't waste your time if that's going to be the recommendation. Now, the second in terms of that similar thing is going to be, what's it like for the patient? You can talk to any patient who's had both Kybella and liposuction that the Kybella recovery and the actual procedure is technically more painful. Now, as much as a lot of people like to say that they're afraid of doing liposuction, both of them involve injections and then very little. The biggest thing is gonna be downtime. One, you gotta wear a head wrap. The other one, you have to look like a bullfrog for a week. Either way, it's almost a similar amount of downtime, so you really wanna think that through. Is it something that can be one and done? You have to have such a little bit amount of fat where you're doing Kybella, or is it something that you're gonna do three times and even if you get up to save a little bit of money, you're gonna have three separate downtimes. It's like doing lipo three times. Is that worth it for you, the patient? And like I said, in certain circumstances, when you have a very small amount of fat, it's important. Now let's talk about the one that's more important for injectors and providers, and that's gonna be anatomy. Not everyone can have Kybella done successfully, and the variation there is anatomy. Externally, we're looking for a moderate amount of fat to do Kybella, as I mentioned. However, internally, what we're assessing is a muscle called the platysma. So, is your platysma going to allow for successful Kybella treatment? And how do you know if your platysma makes you a good candidate for liposuction versus a deep neck lift? Now, let's first talk about the platysma and how to assess the position. So as a provider, it's gonna be key to figure out where that muscle is. A lot of patients will have it lower, and some people will even have it more forward. And while the chin position is the number one determinant of that, genetically a lot of people can simply have a lower platysma based on the second connection of the platysma, which is the hyoid bone, which is part of the windpipe. Now, unfortunately, that is not movable, and even though we can extend the chin, we can't really move the hide, but we can adjust and trim and move the platysma, so we wanna make sure that the fat is outside of that. Now, the easiest way to assess this is by pinching the area of fat that bothers you and then flexing the muscle. As you can see, when I flex, a lot of the fat slips out because my double chin is inside of the platysma muscle. When I pinch this area and flex it and I push in, I can feel that muscle inside. So the, that's gonna be one way. The other way is when the patient looks straight up, that's their deep fat getting out of the way and especially when you're looking at them from the side and they're looking straight up, 
Is that a profile that's appropriate? Because if we get rid of all the superficial fat with either aggressive lipo or a really good Kaivala treatment, that's what's going to be that's left. If that position is still not that good, stay away from doing Kybella. Liposuction and Kybella both target superficial fat. If we want to get the fat inside of the platysma, we need to open up the platysma and remove that deep fat, aka deep neck lift. If you want to know more about that, check out this video over here. But overall, it's super important prior to doing Kybella to assess your platysmal position. And too often, I see patients and providers not even aware of this being an issue. And this is going to be the key way to know whether you're a good candidate for Kybella, even lipo, and if Kybella will work for you. Hopefully, that helps a lot of people out there. I'd say about a quarter of the people I see, even though it's getting less, have had failed Kybella treatment. And I want to help everyone avoid a costly mistake. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel.